Everyone feared the humans, even before humanity reached beyond their crater world. Most feared how humanity's potential to reach out with their minds would make it impossible for them to hide amongst the stars. Also, they would not be able to keep humans from discovering secrets long buried and hidden, or technologies that have yet to be developed as they would be able to reach out beyond the timeline. At least, some of them could. What no one understood is the humans' insistence to go beyond something they call the human condition. This desire drove the species to use their potential and technology that had been hidden from the general population for nearly a century. They used this to reach beyond. Upon reaching beyond themselves, humans eventually realized they required something. Stimulation. You see, the worst part of being immortal now that they've reached that is the boredom, of course. This is why, with humans, what they do when they're bored, well, usually they go to war. This would not be so bad if they weren't so damn good at it. One of the very distant reptilian species, a young species, would find out the truth the hard way as they forced a landing on a simple human colony within their own sector. If they had known what they were doing, they could have just asked the humans to leave their sectors, and the humans most likely would have simply picked up and left. Instead, the young species had to prove themselves by attacking. Somehow, the humans had realized the attack was coming. The reptilians didn't understand as they continued to attack, yet... It seems though the humans withdrew, just staying ahead of the advance, somehow being able to do that. It's like they could see what was coming. The humans did eventually just pick up and leave the planet, and the reptilian species, known as the Heck, took it over for themselves. Believing they had frightened humanity away, the Heck began to set up colonies using the humans' own domiciles and equipment. The Heck engineers had a field day examining human construction and mining equipment, which was way more advanced than anything they had. The heck immediately believed they could integrate this tech into their own, but before they could begin in earnest, the humans returned. As they came in on the other side of the planet, they began flying onto the planet in what looks like metal raindrops as it rained armored humans all over the world. The strange energy weapons that burst out, taking every one they hit to the ground. Multiple weapons even seemed to come from the human shoulders, sending out bursts of that strong energy weapon that every time it even touched one of their own, they seemed to just flinch and then fall over. The heck fought back, of course, with a type of ballistic weapon that is analogous to a spear gun, actually. They believed that the lance itself would penetrate the human shell and take out the squishy bits inside. When struck with this weapons, the human inside would hear the sound of metal hitting their armor and then the metal hitting the ground as the spear simply dropped. The phrase most humans would say as they were hit the first time, looked at the strange metal spear, and then looked at the one firing and go, that's cute. Sweeping across the planet, the humans did not stop. In desperation, the single heck ship that was in orbit was about to send a barrage of their mass area ordnance down towards the surface. This is actually a version of the fuel air bombs that humanity used a long time ago. The command was less and less hesitant to use these weapons as they watched over a multitude of cameras as humanity simply advanced. That is when they saw something odd and pulled it up on the main screen. Inside of one of the domiciles was one of the very few females that had actually come to colonize this planet. A human actually pushed the locked door open with ease, one-handed. Inside the main room, the female immediately took up an aggressive stance but did not advance yet. She stood there growling and hissing as three more humans entered right behind it, seeming to spread out across the walls, all of them carrying weapons and all of them with their weapons on their back raised and ready to fire. The female had no chance and she knew it. 
The command was watching this event, and their hearts began to beat faster and faster as the few moments ticked by. The female just charged and swung her small claw at the human, then a metal hand reached out and stopped it cold right there and held tight. Everyone watching had the same thought. They feared that the human would kill her, tear her apart right in front of them, or take her for its own reasons or purposes that made all of them just shudder from the top of their skull to the tip of their tail. Instead, the human seemed to move as though it was being called. Its attention was pulled towards the side, towards one of its own, who simply pointed at something. The one holding the female turned to see the nest. It was a freshly made nest with four eggs in it. This was one of the few females that had actually followed her partner to this colony to start a new life there. This made everyone pause, heck, and human alike. The human then released its hold on the female, and the female pulled back. Then they saw as the human weapons seemed to fold themselves back and stow themselves on the armor, and the rest of the armor humans seemed as though they backed up a few steps away from the nest itself as though they were almost scared of it. The female looked confused as the humans gestured towards the nest one more time as though they were conversing but no one could hear anything. The female then stood between the humans and the nest once again protecting it. The human in charge suddenly stopped and stayed perfectly still. A few moments later, Every single heck, every single human heard a booming voice inside their head screaming, We don't kill kids! Even the captain aboard the heck ship flinched at this and just couldn't understand there was a voice inside his head screaming at him. After recovering from this, he shook it off and the staff looked at the video and found all the humans in every single area had stopped and were staring directly at whatever camera was closest to them, as though they could see right through it. Being beyond creeped out, it took a minute before the captain disregarded all protocol and demanded that they open communications with the humans, even though they feared the potential hijacking of their equipment above everything else, they opened communications regardless. To the command's absolute shock, the voice on the other side seemed pleasant. A human voice came in but seemed to actually be translated. They said, ah, finally. This is the human's clan, Drake. We have returned to our colony to collect our equipment. Please allow us to do so unmolested, and we will leave peacefully. The captain didn't understand this at first, but was put back. I am High Captain Yeesh. How can you even think of making such demands after killing so many of our species? We have not killed anyone. That energy blast that you've been watching causes those struck with it to go into a temporary coma. They should awaken within the next solar cycle. Besides, we humans really don't like putting children in harm's way, and we thought this was a military outpost. Slightly confused, but being of a military mind, the captain wanted to ask other questions. Is that why you sent a psychic message? Why didn't you do that from the beginning? The human seemed a little sympathetic. Simply put, I Captain, it tends to scare other species when we do that, especially during first contact like this. There's enough tensions right now as is without giving all of you very painful headaches, which we really could do. The one that sent you that message to all of you will actually be disciplined for his outburst, as warranted as it is. Scaring us near death was warranted? How? Why? Like he had said, we don't kill children. And when we saw that clutch of eggs, he got a little agitated at the idea that we might end some. You see, he almost did, but if he had actually stunned the mother, the chances of the baby's survival drops to zero. 
I believe you understand what I'm saying and why he would be a little agitated at the situation. After a minute of pause, a message comes from the Heck homeworld. Retrieve your items. However, we refuse to return the items already removed from the planet. Realizing not much had been removed, they agreed. And with this stipulation agreed upon, mainly because the only things taken off-world are a few small pieces of mining equipment, the armored humans simply turned around and started loading the equipment. No fuss, no muss. They took great care not to damage any of the heck still asleep as they loaded the transports and got ready to leave. As the humans lift off from the surface, a young mother watches with four newborns in her arms. Her mate is next to her as the last of the heck are awakening around them. They both had a solid respect and fear of the humans, but still hope to see them again one day. Hello everybody, this is Syntax. I appreciate you joining me for the story today. Before I go, I'd like to send out a couple quick thank yous to a couple of my supporters. Those would be Eric Glenn and SS Demon. Thank you both for supporting the channel. Everyone else, I'll see you next time. This is Syntax, ejecting.